Popular wisdom has it that scientific understanding has challenged or even replaced the notion of God. My next guest has become one of the most controversial philosophical minds on the planet by arguing pretty much the opposite. Dr Stephen C. Meyer says humanity's greatest scientific discoveries prove there is an intelligent mind behind the universe. He's a New York Times best-selling author who's tested his ideas on some of the world's biggest debate stages. And Stephen C. Meyer, I'm delighted to say, is here in London, delighted joining to be me on you. Uncensored. Absolutely. So, I mean, you've got an amazing pedigree to discuss all this. You've got a PhD in the philosophy of science from Cambridge. You're a former geophysicist. You now direct the Discovery Institute Center for Science and Culture in Seattle. You've had New York Times bestsellers, Signature in the Cell, Darwin's Doubt, Return of the God Hypothesis. And you've been on all the biggest uh, podcasts in the world, Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro. And now I'm glad to say uh, uncensored. This all blew up last week because Tucker Carlson went on Joe Rogan. And I don't know if you saw this, but he said this about this very issue. Take a look. If evolution is real, and if there is this is constant... I don't know. But it's, it's, it's visible. Like, you can measure it in certain animals. You can you, measure it, adaptation. Yeah. But there's no evidence that... Evol in fact, I think we've kind of given up on the idea of evolution. The theory of evolution as articulated by Darwin is, like, kind of not true. Right? In, what, in what sense? Well, in the most basic sense, the idea that, you know, all life emerged from a single cell organism and over time, and there would be a fossil record of that, and there's not. Your response? Well, uh, I don't know what Tucker knows about all this, but... Uh, <laughs> Probably not as qualified as you, but he's, he's, he, you know, he likes to... Maybe we start with something that happened here in London a few years ago. 2016, a uh, major conference convened by the Royal Society, arguably the world's most august and prestigious scientific body, it was convened by a group of evolutionary biologists who uh, are dissatisfied with the standard neo-Darwinian theory of evolution. And many of the, the conveners are calling for a new theory because the primary mechanism of biological change articulated by Darwin and his subsequent followers now called the neo-Darwinists, the idea of natural selection acting on random mutations and variations, is now understood to lack the creative power to generate major changes in the history of life. And is, is the, the, are the crux of this debate, is it, as Tucker was getting at there, is it that if you actually start from where Darwin's theory begins, the creation of the human being was so complicated, the body, the way we exist is so complicated, it doesn't make any rational sense. There's two issues, really. There's how do you get to the first life from the simpler non-living chemicals, that's sometimes called chemical evolutionary right. theory, and that's a complete mess. It's in, it's in a state of impasse, and almost everyone, even your recent guest, uh, Richard Dawkins, yeah. acknowledges we have no chemical evolutionary theory that accounts for the origin of the first life. And many people don't know that Darwin didn't attempt to explain the origin of the first life. Rather, it, he presumed one or very few simple organisms, which we now know are not, were not simple, mm. and then proposed a mechanism by which you could generate all the new forms of life we see on the planet today. I mean, but even that now is being challenged because the main mechanism of evolutionary change does a nice job of explaining small-scale variation, mm. what Tucker was referring to, I think, as adaptation. Mm. This would be examples like Darwin's finches, where the beaks get a little bigger, a little mm. smaller in response to varying weather patterns. But it does a very poor job of explaining the major innovations in the history of life, such as the origin of birds or mammals or animals in the first place. And there in the fossil record, we do see very abrupt, many uh, uh, instances of very abrupt appearance without the transi transitional intermediates that you'd expect on the basis of the Darwinian picture of the, the tree of life. So is your belief that the Darwin theory actually fails? Then? I think it does fail. Uh, I think it, it captures an element of the truth. It, it, there's a, the the small-scale microevolutionary variation is certainly a real process, and no one uh, disputes that. Natural selection is a real process, but what's at, what's at issue now is the degree to which it has genuine creative power. And I think at this 2016 conference, the opening talk was given by a prominent Austrian evolutionary biologist, not an American talk show host, <laughs> and uh, uh, he enumerated five major explanatory deficits of neo-Darwinism, many of them surrounding this problem that the mechanism lacks the, the generative or creative power necessary to account for the major innovations in the history of life.